Salt Lake City, Utah, the capital city of a conservative state, it serves as the home base for the LDS Church, but it is also a place where liberal ideas and great diversity thrive. Salt Lake City has one of the largest LGBT communities in the United States, and like any community, is one with several voices of expression. One of those voices is the gay-themed monthly newspaper, The Q Salt Lake. Locals simply refer to it as The Q. Um, Michael Aaron, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, sorry, <laughs> that's what they do with the news people. Q Salt Lake was started 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago, when Utah's Amendment 3 fight had, was, was beginning, and there was just no news outlet for the gay community. What were the talking points? You know, you hear things at the office water cooler, and what do you, what, what is the answer to all of the stuff that they say and ask? Um, and so we thought it was important to bring a level of professionalism to gay media. But we wanted a magazine that wasn't necessarily just about gay issues. We wanted a magazine that was something that a gay man or a lesbian or a bisexual or transgender person would be interested in reading. So what we've learned from the uh, reader surveys that we've done is that our demographic is not anywhere near 100% gay and lesbian people. It is actually between 20 and 25 percent are heterosexual people and I've talked to many of them and they are are people who just read everything but more often than not they're moms and their dads and their sisters and they are brothers they just want to understand uh, the community around them and perhaps even how they can talk to their brothers and sisters and sons and daughters this is very much a home office and it has changed the dynamic of, of working, you know, in a magazine like this. At first it was very good because I was very good about making sure when I'm in this room I'm at work, when I'm out outside I'm not at work. Then it just turns out now that I'm just in this room a lot. We're, we're now on a daily cycle, even though we're a monthly magazine. A lot of our, our content and a lot of our interest is online. And periodically we do get requests, um, especially if somebody was in the publication, for the actual print edition. Mostly we just uh, send people to our online archive. We actually have one of the largest read website in the, in the entire state. We have about 300 locations from Ogden down to Harriman. Um, and those are all distributed uh, to coffee shops and restaurants and uh, bookstores and places like that. Outside of the core of Salt Lake City, you get into areas of town where you're more likely to run into a manager or even a, a patron who isn't exactly on the page of loving the gay and lesbian publication in town. And as far as uh, gay and lesbian publications, we're one of the larger ones as far as traffic goes in the entire country. My name is Miles, and I live in Salt Lake City. No, I don't. Wait a minute. I live in Dallas, Texas. So why am I talking about Q Salt Lake? It's because I once did live in Salt Lake City and Q Salt Lake was a huge part of what I came to be experience as the community. And so now Q Salt Lake keeps me informed and up to date on the community I became such a part of that has so many people I know that I care about. It also is up to date with true and accurate reporting that's on the edge of what's happening in the LGBTQ community. And so for me, staying up to date is Q Salt Lake. I think the history of the magazine actually kind of starts out when I moved out of my, my parents' house and started going to college. I went to the, the University of Utah and I, I had no idea there was any such thing as a gay community. I was probably living down in the, uh, at the dorms for maybe four months um, before I met somebody who introduced me to an actual community. This was the first I'd seen a group of people together who were gay. And it was the first time I'd seen two men kiss. I had done it before, but I'd never actually seen anybody else do it. The next year, I was at the University of Utah, an English professor who wanted to restart the what was called back then the Gay Student Union. And 
I showed up and I walked out of that room after the meeting as co-chair of the organization. From then on, I have been basically politically active, uh, socially active in the gay community. Part of why I think it's important to have a publication is to make sure that people know that there is a community out there. My experience with Q is rather historical for me in that I was the editor of the first gay newspaper magazine here in Utah. It was called The Salt Lick and it was pretty humble. We sold ads to the bars and it was on eight and a half by eleven paper. Nothing too fancy, but it got the word out. The community needed something more than the, the bar rag that was out there and I, I don't say that disparagingly, we needed a bar rag. Uh, years go by and people have a need for information. That had some, some brain to it. I uh, wasn't doing that any longer, I had changed careers. That was the launch of, of what, we, what was then called Salt Lake Metro. And lo and behold, here comes this upstart Michael Aaron and this magazine. Uh, I teamed up with the publisher of Little Lavender Book to create Salt Lake Metro, differences of opinion. Um, and so two years later, I ended up basically walking out, hit reset, and we became Q Salt Lake. I think the rest is history because Q is here and is gonna be here for a long time. We are right in the heart of, of Mormonville. We're in the in the heart of some of the one of the reddest states in the in the country, um, and there is a lot of conservative uh, people out there. And where that does hurt is our pocketbook, where a lot of the business owners would just never even consider being part of Q Salt Lake. When I came to Salt Lake City, I found that there was this community, this this ultra liberal microcosm of a community. I still find that today, although the microcosm is now actually the, the general community. As far as, as, as difficulties, over the years it's actually ended up being more about the inner turmoil with the gay community. We get a little bit of who are you to say you represent us. But now that we see that the marriage rights are coming through and gay is the new black and um, and our community is being heard for the first time. You see poll numbers about people agreeing that same-sex marriage should happen and agreeing, even in, in the very conservative Utah, that uh, gay, lesbian, and transgender people should uh, not experience discrimination. Um, what we're seeing now is the ultra-conservatives are now the bigger issue. And it's the ultra-conservatives that control the Utah State Legislature up on the hill. Uh, and so what we're hearing is that there might be a new uh, attempt by some of the most conservative people uh, to go through our publication even and find out who is supporting the homosexual you know, activists in, in what they're doing um, and really punish those people. The fact of the matter is, these people really have no, no real power, and so we we talk about the umbilical cord of, of Utah not being long enough to let you leave for too long. It's been some of the greatest ten years of my life, and what I really really enjoy about that is that we are a central part of our community, and I would want to be nowhere else.